Hey math class, hope everything's going well. Welcome back to another math lesson. Today we're going to be looking at lesson 57, and we're going to be looking at parts 1 through 5. Miss Nielsen and I decided to switch, so I'll be teaching your class today, and then Miss Nielsen will take over your class tomorrow. And then we'll continue the same routine starting next week. I will do one lesson, and then Miss Nielsen will do the next lesson. So let's get started. Let's look at part 1. For part one, we're practicing our multiplication facts. So you can practice your skip counting, or we can look at our multiplication chart, or we can try to memorize our multiplication facts. So for part one, we're multiplying six and three. So six multiplied by three equals, get ready. Great job, right? It's 18. We can skip count by threes six times, or we can skip count by sixes three times. Let's look at part B. For part B, we're multiplying five and seven. So five, you can skip count by fives seven times. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. There is your answer. Or we can skip count by seven five times. Seven, 14, 21, 28, 35. So I want you guys to then practice and continue to review your multiplication facts by doing part C, D, E, F, and G. So you can pause the video now, and then I will meet you guys in part two. Welcome back guys to part two. I'll read what it says in the book. This table is supposed to show the numbers for the apples that were ripe and the apples that were not ripe in two orchards. So we have the Vista Orchard and Brandon Orchard. This table does not have enough numbers. The facts beside the table tell about three numbers. So what you're given on your sheet is, let me just finish it up here, is this, right? So at the top, it tells us this category is for how many apples are ripe, how many apples are not ripe, and then the total number of apples. So this will include apples that are ripe and not ripe. We have our two orchards. We have our Vista orchard and Brandon orchard. And then this will include the total for both orchards. So here will be the total for both that are ripe. Here it will be the total for both orchards that are not ripe. And then for this number here is the total for both orchards for the total number of apples. So this is the one number that we're given, 4,284. So we know that for both orchards, the total number of ripe and not ripe apples was 4,284. Underneath our chart, we have three facts that we're gonna have to use to help fill in our chart. So our fact one tells us a total of 875 apples were ripe. So if we look at our chart, we're going to look at how many apples were ripe, and it's the total number, so it'll include for both of the orchards. So this number will be 875. Our fact number two says, in Vista Orchard, 1,064 apples were not ripe. Right, so once again, we're looking at Vista Orchard, and then how many apples were not ripe. Right? And it's 1,064. And our third fact tells us in Vista Orchard, 851 apples were ripe. So once again, I'm going to look at Vista Orchard. And then I'm going to go to my ripe category. And it tells us that the number is 851. So I filled in the three facts but we still have one, two, three, four, five missing numbers. So I'm gonna help you solve some of them using our number families, and then I want you guys to solve for all the rest of the numbers. Once we have this chart filled in, then we can answer the four questions that pertain to this chart. So let's look at question, or let's look at the first box that we have right here. So in order to find this number, I can make a number family going across. So I'll do that right underneath. Right. This number, 851, and this number, 1064, will be my small numbers. 
this number that we're looking for will be my big number. That means that number will go at the end of the arrow. So let me write that in. 851 is my first small number. 1064 will be my other small number. And then I'm going to try to find this number. This is going to be my big number, so that means I have to add these two numbers up. Remember, if you're looking for a big number, you're going to add the two smaller numbers. So I'm going to add 1,064 and 851. Make sure I line up all of my digits. Right, 1 plus 4 is 5. 6 plus 5 is 11. So I'm going to put my 1 down and carry the other one. 1 plus 8 is 9, and then 1 plus nothing is 1, right? So our big number will be 1,915. So I can write that number in right here. Now I can solve for this number family, for this missing number, by making a number family, this time going down. So I will draw that right on here. Right, so now we're going to be working on this number family going down. So this 851 will be my small number. This will be my other small number, the number that is missing. And then 875 will be my big number. So I'll draw the number family this time going down. 851 is my big number, uh, is my small number. The missing number is also my small number. And then 875 will be my big number. When I'm trying to solve for my small number, I'm going to have to subtract these two numbers. So I will do that right here. 875 minus 851. Once again, all of my place values are lined up. And then I can solve. 5 minus 1 is 4, 7 minus 5 is 2, 8 minus 8 is 0. So the number is going to be 24. Now we can solve for our other number right here. I can solve for this number by once again making a number family going down. 1915 will be my small number. This missing number, once again, will be my other small number. And then 4,284 will be your big number. So you're going to have to subtract 1,915 from 4,284 to find this missing number. Once you've found this missing number, then you can make a number family going across to find this missing number. And then you can make another family going across to find this missing number. So I want you guys to now pause the video and try to find out the other three missing numbers in your chart. So I'll see you guys once you're done. So once you guys are done filling in all the missing numbers in your chart, you have four questions I need you to answer. Part A asks you, were there fewer ripe apples in Vista Orchard or in Brandon Orchard? So make sure we're reading the questions clearly. Right, it's asking were there fewer ripe apples. The next question asks us which orchard had more apples that were not ripe. Then the next question asks us how many apples that were not ripe were in both orchards. And then the last question asks what or which orchard had more total apples. So once again, in order to complete these questions, we have to first fill in your chart. So please work on that, and then I will see you guys in part three. Welcome back to part three, guys. I will read what it says in the book. Each fraction equals a whole number. You can figure out the whole number if you read the fraction as a division problem. So we're going to be looking at fractions. But these fractions are also division problems. So what you're going to have to do is solve for them, or find the whole number that they equal. Once again, we're looking at part three. I'm looking at part A. So the question is, or the fraction, is 24 over 3. Right, so our fraction is 24 over 3. But as a division problem, 
it is 24 divided by 3. So it's asking us how many times can 3 go into 24. So we can try skip counting. So we'll skip count by 3's until we reach 24, and that will give us our answer. So we have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. So our answer is 8. 3 goes into 24 8 times. Just like that. If we're looking at part B, the fraction that we have is 16 over 2. Just like that. Right? Once again, this fraction can be read as a division problem, which is 16 divided by 2. So you're trying to figure out how many times can 2 go into 16. So we can try skip counting by 2s until we reach 16. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Uh, 14, 16. So my answer is 8. 2 goes into 16 8 times. Just like that. So I want you guys to fill in the other missing questions. Figure out what the whole number will be for each fraction or each division problem. So you can pause the video now and then I will meet you guys in part number four. Welcome back guys. So we're looking at part four. In part four, we're looking at division problems. This time, the division problem is written underneath the sign. So I will show you our first problem. We have three dividing into 96. So for these types of problems, I'm gonna give you guys what I would do or the various steps I would follow. Right, so you're trying to see how many times can three go into 96. So our first step is going to be to look at the first number underneath the division sign. Right, so that will be a nine. So I'm gonna underline it. Now I have to figure out, can three divide into nine? Right, three can go into nine three times. So right above the nine, I'm going to write a three. Now I'm gonna look at the next number. I'm gonna underline that. I'm going to see if 3 can divide into 6, right? Which it can. 3 can go into 6 two times. So my answer is 32. 3 goes into 96 32 times. Let's look at part B. This time we have a four-digit number. So we are dividing 4 into 8,284. To 8,284. So once again, I'm going to follow the exact same steps as before. Right? I'm going to be looking at this 4. And then I'm going to be looking at the very first number underneath the division sign. So I'm going to underline it. Can 4 go into 8? Right? 4 can go into 8 two times. So I'm going to draw my arrow to show that I'm dividing the 4 into the 8, and then right above the 8, I'm going to write a 2, because 4 goes into 8 two times. Now I'm going to look at the 4 and the next number. Can I divide 4 into 2? Right? I can't. 4 cannot go into 2, so I'm going to look at the next number as well, 28. Can I divide 4 into 28? The answer is yes. Right, so how many times can 4 go into 28? The answer is, get ready, right, it's 7. But I can't just write a 7. Because there are two digits in this number that I'm dividing into, I'm going to have to represent that on the top as well. So instead of writing 7, I'm going to write 0, 7. Right, so we divided the 4 into 28. And now for the last step, I'm going to divide the 4 into the last digit, which is a 4. So 4 can go into 4 one time. So right above the 4, I'm going to write my 1. So once again, guys, when we have a problem such as this, 
you're going to look at the number that you're dividing and then go look at the first number underneath the division sign. Can a four go into eight? Yes. So then right on top, right on top I'm gonna write the answer, which is two. Then I looked, can four go into two? It doesn't, so then I'll look at the next number as well. Can four go into 28, right? And we said it can seven times. But because this number has two digits, I have to represent that on top with two digits as well. That's why I added my zero. And then I looked, can four divide into four, which it can. How many times? One, so I put my one at the top. So now I want you guys to practice for part C. For part C, you're dividing three into 1,824. So you can pause the video now, and then you can practice that or complete that part. And I will see you guys in our last part for today's video. Welcome back to our last part for today's video. We're looking at part number five. In this part, we're practicing our multiplication. We have some three digit numbers that we're multiplying with a one digit number. And we also have a two digit number that we're multiplying with another two digit number. And then we have a three digit number multiplying by a one digit number. I will do one example because we've done a lot of practice with this. And then I want you guys to practice the other questions. I will do part A with you. So for part A, we are multiplying 476 by three. So this is gonna be a simple question because we only have one number on the bottom. So I'm gonna look at the three and multiply it by the top three numbers. I'm gonna multiply the three with the six, the three with the seven, and the three with the four. All right, so let's look at our first. Three multiplied by six is, get ready, right, it's 18. So I'm gonna write my eight on the bottom and carry my one. Three multiplied by seven equals, get ready, right, it's 21. Plus the one that I added, it will give me 22. I'm gonna carry the two and write the two on the bottom. Now I'm gonna be multiplying four and the three, but I also have to then add the two that I carried over. So three multiplied by four equals, get ready, right, it's 12 plus the two, which is 14. I can add in my comma, so my answer is 1,428. So remember guys, once again, you're gonna look at the very last number uh, on the bottom and multiply it by the top three numbers. If we had a two digit number here, so we can look at part D, that's where you have to do an extra two steps. I will do this one last example, and then I would like you to try the rest of part five on your own. So for part D, we're multiplying 76 and 49. Right, so once again, just like in the last example, I'm gonna start off with the number in my ones, which is the nine. I'm going to multiply the nine and the six, and the nine and the seven. So nine multiplied by six is 54. I'm gonna write my four down here, oops, and carry over my five. Now we're gonna multiply the nine and the seven, which is, get ready, right? It's 63. And then I have to add my five. So 64, 65, 66, 67, 68. So my top number is going to be 684. Now I'll use a different color to show our next step. Now I'm going to be looking at this 4. Remember that this 4 is in the tens category. So instead of a 4, it's a 40. To represent that, I have to add my 0. Now, 4 multiplied by 6 is, get ready, right, it's 24. So I'm going to put my 4 down here and carry over the 2. Now I'm going to multiply the 4 and the 7, which is, get ready, 
right? It's 28. Plus the 2 is 30. So I'm going to line up all of my numbers. And now I just have to add. I'm going to add 684 plus 3,040. 4 plus 0 is 4. 8 plus 4 is 12. I'll put my 2, carry over my 1. 6 plus 1 is 7. I can add in my decimal. And then 3 plus 0 is 3. So my answer is 3,724. So once again, guys, you're going to look at the bottom number in the ones, multiply by the two top numbers. Then you're going to look at the number in the tens, which is the four. To represent the tens, I had to put my zero, and then it's the exact same steps. I multiplied the four with the six, the four with the seven. Then I added these two numbers, and my final answer was 3,724. So great job, guys. So please finish up parts one, two, three, four, five, all of the questions that we didn't work on together. And then I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.